Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. Today we're going to be talking about a relay and fuse panel. Do you need one? How do you make one? And then we're going to make one. What is it? It's essentially a place where electricity comes into one spot and goes out in the direction that you want it. You already have one in your car in the form of your fuse panel, except with the fuse panel, somebody else has already decided what circuits you can have, how much load they can handle, and where they go. And usually they only come with one or two relays to control a horn and maybe a fan, depending on the model you have. So you don't have much control here, and they're usually in a place that you can't access or service. You can purchase in the aftermarket a different one. That This one is a six circuit one that's got six relays and six fuses to power them. So that's what it is. How does it work? Let's go over here. First, let's talk about relays. You need to understand how they work. Most aftermarket relays, this is the Bosch style, are configured like this. There's two pins parallel, two pins perpendicular, and the five pin models have one pin in the center here. I don't know what German engineer numbered these terminals, but it's not very helpful or intuitive. First, the perpendicular one. That's number 30. That's your battery, okay? Meaning that's the power coming in. It doesn't have to be from a battery. It just needs to be from a 12 volt source of power, okay? But it's, it's the main power for whatever you're trying to turn on. Then there's 87. That's your load, okay? Load is just what you're trying to power, whether it's your cooling fan or your fuel pump or a light up surfing Santa that's on your dashboard. Next is the switch, 86. This is where you come in. This is you, guy you get to tell when that light up Santa turns on. Let's say you, you think it's really impressive to cute girls, right? So you don't want it always turned on. You wanna be able to switch it on, switch, switch, when you see a cute girl. Click, bzz, otherwise it's not on. Light up Santa's off. Now, the thing is the way electricity works, it always gotta go somewhere. So you can't just switch it and have it die in the relay. It's gotta have a ground, which is what 85 is for. 85 is ground. So one wire comes in from you, from let's just say it's a toggle switch, any kind of switch, and it goes to ground. When you switch that, that electricity coming through the relay, even if it's just a teeny tiny bit, closes a contact inside which connects your battery to your light up Santa. Bonus territory, 87A. So as I said, normally this relay is open, meaning there's no power going from battery to Santa. So there is power going from battery to whatever 87A is. Let's say you got a, your favorite snarky political sign light up, lit up in the back of your truck. So that would always be on, even with this switch off. So let's say you've got your cute girl indicator switch off, okay? Your political sign is on. You see a cute girl, you hit the switch, okay? That will then open the connection between 30 and 87A, turning off the political sign, and close the connection between 30 and 87, turning on your light up Santa, you get a date, everybody's happy. That is how Relay works. It's basically a very rudimentary computer. Now let's talk about a Relay panel. It's just six of those things we talked about. And fuses, why do you need fuses? Well, each thing you're powering, each Santa, is going to have a different need. A light-up Santa may only draw 5 amps of energy. I think most of you guys understand that amps mean sort of the force with which electricity uh, travels, okay? It's not technically correct, but just work with me. A cooling fan uses a fair amount of amperage. A air compressor uses a lot of amperage. LED lights use hardly any at all, so you want to have different uh, fuses before your battery positive enters the relay, okay? So it protects the whole circuit. 
so that if there's some sort of a short somewhere, it blows the fuse before the relay and saves all the wiring and stuff after it. So each one of these fuses will be the gate of power to the number 30 in each one of the relays. So power will come in, go up, through the fuse, down, and then over to the number 30. How do you get the power in? Through a distribution block. They don't have to be fancy like this. They can be cheap like this. It doesn't really matter. The point is power comes into a lug and because this bus bar is connected, all of these will now be hot. I like this one because it's got a fancy cover and it, uh, it looks cooler. So basically I will bring one hot power to here from the battery directly, okay? Not directly, I have a 50 amp fuse on that line just in case. I've got a bunch of other uh, lugs here that will then send power up to my fuses. What about my ground? Same thing. You just bust them together at the end. Remember, you need to ground out your switch one to here. Similar thing, you just have one lug going to a nice good ground and then you can ground everything to the bus bar here. This is where I struggled personally because the way these are, you can do this with a regular relay which looks something like, say this, right, where you, where you put the relay in and you can mount it and have your wires coming out in front. The problem is it's hard to keep this clean because you see all the wires. Nothing wrong with it, okay? You can actually attach this to a board like we're gonna attach this one to, and it can look relatively clean, but I prefer to have them sort of disappear in the back. Do you need a relay panel? Depends. So if you don't have any additional accessories, you just have one switch for one Santa light up uh, ornament, you, you don't need to worry about it. Okay, but if you're running multiple accessories, these come in handy for both protection, control, and flexibility. For example, a cooling fan. Uh, if you've added a fuel pump because you've switched to fuel injection, running lights, a light bar, uh, an air compressor, which I have all those things uh, planned or currently on the Scout. So once you get to that number, like three or four things, it's probably best to put them all in a nice combined, clean uh, package like we're gonna do here. It doesn't have to be six, you can do it for three or whatever, they make smaller versions of all this stuff. In fact, I've kind of chunked it up because I have the air compressor and it runs 40 amps, so I have a special 40 amp relay for that. And I use thicker wires for all that. So it really depends on your situation. But again, three to four extra circuits and you're in the, you're in the uh, money for putting together something like this. The advantages of doing it this way is like I said, protection, flexibility, single source, and it looks nice. How do you mount it? You can mount it to a piece of metal, like a plate. That has its advantages because you can like weld something and bend it really easily but it's conductive. I like to use ABS, so you can buy sheets of ABS. This is like 3 16 It's probably a little too thin. I probably should have gotten a quarter inch, but dang, this stuff's getting expensive uh, for the big sheets. But I like to buy them in big sheets because I end up using them for other projects around the house. ABS is really useful. In order to cut, to, in order to like get it to the shape you want, you basically score it with a uh, utility knife, put it on the edge and then bend it, and it'll just break clean at that edge. I've already, I sawed through this side uh, with just the body saw. I'll clean this edge up later. And then I scored the back where I wanted it. So let's see if this snaps clean like I said it would. It's kind of a scary process here because you don't want to. There you go. See that? Perfectly clean edge right where I scored it. It's pretty cool actually. Whoop. I'm gonna start getting a little geeky here, so you will be forgiven if you wanna to go to a different, uh, the next car show you wanna go look at. <clears throat> because of packaging problems, I can't do it the way I want, which is unfortunate because I liked the plan before. It was much more self-contained, but, um, but I'm gonna cut it down. I'm gonna maintain the power bus here, and then, um, slim everything down so I can have a spot for it under the dash. I lost my terminal bus, which was here. 
So instead of having it so I can easily disconnect all my accessories, or actually I'm just gonna terminate all of the ones that were gonna come in here to spade terminals and just dump them right into the back of the relay so that there's no, so I can still disconnect it if I need to and pull this out. It just makes it a little harder to service. Definitely still legitimate and workable. I'm also changing my technique a little bit on these terminals here where if they're not really designed for a 10 gauge, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some solder on them. I'm going to keep going here and I'll show you the finished product. There you go. It is done as far as I can get it on the bench. I've got my powers going in. I got my grounds coming out for the ones that are grounded. And the rest is coming out like a, a harness basically. That's what it looks like in the back. Not that pretty in the back, but it looks super clean from the front. You, you'll notice some terminals aren't in because those are the ones that need to come from inside the car. So I'll plug those in when I cut them to length in the car. Well, there it is. I just finished putting on the covers for the ground and a positive bus. Obviously the wires are exposed. I don't want to loom it all up and put the cover on until I test it and make sure there's no, there's no smoke, and uh, which I'm about to do right now. You find the negative. All right, there it is. Is she spark? No spark, that's good. Oh, that is not good. That's funny though. Okay, clearly I've got something going on here because when I hit what should be a prime, it, uh, it hit the starter motor and I think I know what I screwed up there. All right, that was crazy. Try that again. Hopefully it doesn't do it again. Okay, it doesn't. Let's see if it cranks over. Okay, I'm building some fuel pressure. Oh, I probably got to take that cap off. Not start without oxygen, last I checked. Well, I would say that was successful. I, I can't run it for too long. I don't have any, um, I don't have a garage door open or anything. <laughs> There's no circulation here. So um, that was awesome. Electrical's done. The thing fired right up on the carburetor and sounded better than it ever did on a fuel injection. So that's it. That was uh, putting in a fuse panel and a relay panel for the Scout. Obviously, I've got one Gremlin where there's electricity feeding back into the ignition circuit, which is not good. So I will chase that down and try to figure it out. See you next time on Matt's Garage.